for our third trip of the season, a momentous one. We travel across the country to another North Star State, settled in the far north reaches of the Appalachian Mountains, in a land of rushing rivers and heavy snowfall you find a haze of the salt water that crashes its rocky coast. This is, quite possibly, the most beautiful and expansive playground any ice fisherman could dream of. A place commonly forgotten across the ice belt and known as the Pine Tree State. These hills and valleys play host to a population of crappies few have ventured to chase. Welcome to Maine. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! Look at this thing! God! Beast! Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Crappie Chronicles. I'm your host Adam Bartusik, and today is a very, very, very special day. Today is a day that it only happens because of all of you. Three years of support, three years of you guys being the absolute best. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe, please leave a like, please comment. This series has been more than we could have all dreamed of and today, right now, Griff and I just loaded the truck and we get to drive for basically two days to a place we've been dreaming of going since this series even started. It's probably the one place in the country that has as big of, if not bigger crappies than the Twin Cities metro area. And we cannot wait to take you to the glorious state of Maine. So right now, Griff and I are gonna get in the truck. We're gonna drive for two days. We got a new merch drop. And uh, this definitely isn't one of the new ones. This is one of the old hoodies. There's still some in stock. But because you asked for it, we'll deliver. We got the Giesenbroi beer logo, the Break Your PB logo, Griff riding a crappie. We got it on the site. You can go get it. And we got the old Patriotic hoodie back because we're going to New England, baby. Got to be festive. But for now, Griff and I are going to get in the truck and drive for two days. So this is going to be a little bit different spin. This is the trip of a lifetime, and we can't wait to do it. So stay tuned and enjoy the ride with us. Yeah, Lily asked me I was getting gas the other day, and she goes, Daddy, are you getting petrol? Like, petrol? Oh. <laughs> I'm like, what? That's an all-time quote. And Daddy, I just, like, are you getting petrol? I just looked at her, and I'm like, you got to stop watching Pepper Pig. A horse crossing ahead. Where? I don't know, but I, I just saw a sign. See the sign? Oh, there's a sign. I think it's oh, there's, a, there's a sign right there. It says that's a horse crossing sign if I've ever seen I, one. Yeah, it is. But I'm <laughs> for the horse. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Sign, not horse crossing. <laughs> My bad. It's a horse crossing. I was like, where? 39 minutes and we'll be under double digits per hour. Ho, 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 ho. Talk dirty to me, man. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I just took. Uh, lane to the left, and it's we're following a road to New York City currently. And I never thought I'd be able to say that for an ice ever. Not once in my life did I ever think I would see that sign and be like, Yeah, I'm going to New York City. <laughs> Nothing like giving you a toothpick and told you on the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. Come to New York City, they said. It would be fun, they said. So we, we've officially watched the sunset twice, so we're still driving. We're, do, we're doing it. Not, not in Maine. Almost there. Not in Maine yet, but we're, we're about as close as we can be. Well, we're not in Kansas. There's no, there's a lot more hills here. I mean, the ocean's got to be right there, isn't it? 
Hey! We did it! We're in Maine! <laughs> ten, ten states. 26 hours later, we did it. Who's uh, crossed into the Maine? The ocean is right there. Yeah, yeah the ocean's right. Yeah. We can see the ocean. All right. Well, okay. That was exciting. All right. We have arrived at our first Airbnb. This place, you cannot tell because of how dark it is, but it is enormous. Griff and I got to figure out how to get inside now. Dude, look at this stairway, Griff. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I just drove 28 hours and I have to walk up 27 stairs. I'm trying to figure out where the, oh my God. <laughs> wow. Um, I kind of wish we could have stayed at this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. This is pretty. Okay, Griff and I have officially made it to Maine. That was 28 long hours dead straight in the car. We did it. We did it. We came all the way across the country. And uh, to our surprise, there was a little bit more ice than we thought would be here. We're hoping some of it will be safe, but uh, that's for kind of exploring the next few days. I got to get to editing now so that the videos you will have seen before this get done. Tomorrow, Griff's going to get to kind of scouting. We've done a ton of online research. We've looked around this area. We know where we can look for big ones. And tomorrow, Griff just needs to see if there's ice. But Little spud bar in. Yeah, brought that. Glad we remember that right at the end. We were like, oh, man, Bart, you said to bring it. And I was just, I, I went to get the auger cover, actually. And I opened the thing, and there it was sitting there. And I was like, well, that was an omen. We had to go back to get it anyway. So, um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, that was a long <laughs> drive. <laughs> it but, was a really uh, long way. Um, I never thought I'd see a sign that said to New York City and we were towing a snowmobile on an ATV. Yeah, we got some really funny looks going through Chicago and everywhere. Cleveland and New York. Well, we didn't go through New York, but we went through like Buffalo and um, just outside of Boston. And everywhere we went, people were kind of glancing at us like, what are these guys doing? Like, there's not a stitch of snow on the ground. Everything's wide open. We're pulling fish houses. Snowmobile, four-wheeler, I mean, we look kind of funny, but we get here, expected to not really be any ice where we were, and there was actually, we drove by, what, three lakes, and they all of them had ice on them. One that was actually a massive water um, water body, and that thing had, I mean, you could see all the way across it, it had ice, so I'm excited to get out there tomorrow, check it out, see what we find, or at least see what I find, um, but I think tonight we just need to watch some football, kind of relax, sleep in till whenever and uh recover from 28 hour drive and you may be wondering where are ryan waldo and luke and that is coming we had to kind of reschedule this trip so uh they're gonna have a little bit of a different travel scenario but uh griff and i are here so we're gonna start enjoying it All right, good morning, everybody. Once again, welcome to Maine. It is beautiful here. Um, now that you can actually see our Airbnb, this place is ridiculous. It's giant. Um, this is actually so like, I didn't just splurge on this for Griff and I. This was where we were all gonna stay. But then if you know anything about the Northeast, the ice is really inconsistent. It was a super warm winter. We had to kind of reschedule our trip. I wasn't able to completely cancel this place. So we rescheduled it for Griff and I to come out here a few days early and kind of look around. So that's what today is gonna to be for you guys. We've never been here. We have no idea what we're doing. We have a couple friends that have kind of helped us out with telling some areas, but we wanna find some of these fish on our own as well. So today is a complete scouting mission for Griff. Crappies are very new to the main area. They didn't really show up here until about 1995. So Griff's just gonna go exploring. They, it kind of seems like they're about everywhere now. They're really big and they're really fresh. So. You guys just kind of get to go poking around with Griff. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if he's going to catch any. I don't even know if he's going to get on ice because a lot of this was open water recently. But it's going to be an adventure for you. All right. Well, here we go. Um, first morning in Maine. Just going to go out and do some scouting here. Um, got all my f um, first ice stuff because we really don't know ice conditions out here. I came down here and checked a little bit. Um, 
looked like we had pretty good ice so i'm going to head out there but Make sure when you check in first ice, you know, in Maine here, this is basically their first ice. So, want to have your ice picks, your spud, float suit, um, and just be very cautious of how you uh, approach it. You know, take your time, work your way out there. Don't just go walking once you find uh, there's good ice by shore, because it may not be once you get 30, 40 yards offshore. So, sorry, our B Airbnb is right there. So, we're not, I didn't have to make a long drive. I'm about a quarter mile so I'm gonna go out along this basin here there's a couple little little tips out here I'm gonna go check that kind of just look for some life I might go down here there's a nice neck down area right in here um, then there's a there's a ridge right here between another basin over here so I'll just probably get work my way down the shore here get out in this area um, nice inside turn there which should hold some fish Good solid eight and a half. I don't know if you guys can see that, but let's see if this thing is on. Should be on the other side, but the first fish I mean, it's the purge. But not a big one. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. The first main crappie. And it's a freaking stud. Look at that guy. Oh, beautiful fish. Look at that. 13, right on the 13 inch or first main crappie. How cool is that? Booyah. 13 inch or first one, boys. Shallow in the weeds. Sick. There's more down there. Gonna get them. Oh, nice crappie. That was cool. He came up right under the hole. Kind of cool though. You can see him with the live. It looked like there's a weed line. So right here in front of me, like about 10 feet in front of me, there's a weed line. I actually drilled a set of holes right just inside the weed line. And then I'm on the outside of the weed line here. And you can see I drilled another set down that way. Um, but what these fish are doing, I can see them on live, is they're actually not in the weeds. They're just running like this back and forth down this edge pretty cool so i'm just going to kind of work down here and see if i can't find a little bit more of a concentration of fish um but right now i mean i'm having them come through constantly they're just kind of being funny um with biting but i'm just going to change colors here and see if i can't really dial this in and see if i can start smashing them because i probably had like 30 fish come in and i've caught i caught one lost two and had the rest of them just come in and look and you know i had one a couple of little bumps but nothing nothing serious go to this color now i definitely like bright because i went to kind of a little bit less like that white purple and pink one or white blue and pink and they really didn't like that one like i got a, one or two fish to come in but when i was using the chartreuse one they were really coming in but i'm going to try just a little bit different color this one's got the orange back on it. There's a lot of perch. When I did catch one earlier, their fins were super, super orange. So I'm gonna see if maybe uh, adding a little orange to my bait here has, makes a difference. All right, folks. Well, we're at lake number two. Just found how, how to access it. Pretty easy, actually. Nice little uh, access point here, so. Looks like I walk down next to this creek here and then walk out to the lake. Um, first, lake number one was a success, so now we're going to go see what lake number two brings us. Excited to get out here. Those first fish were pretty cool. Um, didn't hammer on them too hard just because it was kind of midday, and I figured that with that water being crystal clear, that they're probably uh, the last hour is probably going to be the deal. Um, so, switching lakes. Go and check it out. Well, these guys are driving wheelers out there. All right. 
I like seeing that. I'm just walking, but we'll bring wheelers back here if it's if it's a success. So talk to you guys in a bit here. These are a little bit bigger than the ones I caught out there last week. Those birds kind of suck. These ones are nice. Jesus, buddy. Feels like a little bit open. Oh yeah. Feels a bit bigger. Yeah, I think you wanted it. Okay, so Griff just called me. The sun is setting. I've been editing all day. Video's not going to be up tonight. You guys already know that. It probably came out at Wednesday at noon. But he said he found a weed bite that he thinks is going to be a sunset bite that's right next to the cabin we're staying at. We're still just searching for lakes and kind of bites right now, but he really wants to try to capitalize on it before the rest of the boys get up here so we can kind of try to dial it in and really break some PBs. So I need to throw some bibs on. We need to get on the water. We got about 30 minutes of light left. That was bigger. Oh, it's a big perch. Wow, that Tika minnow is gone. <laughs> Got him. Well, I'm gonna throw him back. I think that's frowned upon in this state, but that was cool. All right, Griff, we're gonna head in for the night, but how was your day? Amazing, this place is fun. Uh, no shortage of fish anywhere I went. Uh, I fished two lakes today. Uh, didn't really wake up till 10-ish because we uh, of our 27-hour drive that we did straight through. So woke up, came to the lake that we were actually staying right across the street from. Caught uh, one really nice one, lost another one at the hole, lost a really big one. And then bounced out of here, went to another small lake and absolutely destroyed big perch, um, ton of eater blue eater crappies. We were just kind of testing to see if there was crappies in the lake. They were. Um, so now we're just, we came back to the lake I found this morning to see if it was a right at dark bite. It is not. There's nothing here anymore. Um, so we're going to head back in, go eat some food, chill out for the night, and then I'm going to go back at it again tomorrow, bright and early, and try to get in four lakes tomorrow if I can. And so all I got to do is say that. You just got to say it. Layup. I like layups. Easiest shot in basketball. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Like how to, how to, not know what it means. I don't know how to pronounce it. Sound it out. Sound. <laughs> uh, we have a different idea of layups. Um, West. West. Aquasock? Aquasock Lake. That's what I would say, right? Aquasock? There you go. I don't know. I don't know either. I, I I'm gonna say Aquasock. Yeah, Aquasock. <laughs> Matasinuk. Lock it in. West of Bam. How's there a G after that? West of Bamgok Lake. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought there was like a right aim. Oh, Ooh. oh boy. <laughs> Lake Pasagasa Wakey. Whoa. <laughs> um. 
Naraguagas. Naraguagas. <laughs> West of ba Bam Gamak Lake. That's it. West of Bam. West of Bam Gamak Lake. That's the best I got right there. That G throws me off. Lower Sabo Usma Kuqua Spam Wiscosis. Naraguaga. That's gotta be it, dude. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Uh, lower Sabo Usqua Spam Wiscosis. <laughs> Is that it? Alright, so Griff and I, uh, honestly, we're just moving like 10 miles. Um, we have a different Airbnb we need to go to. Is this ideal? Absolutely not. It's because we had to reschedule the trip. So, uh, yeah, time to pack it up and go to our new place. We're psyched about this one, though. This, this place is sick. And uh, it, honestly, it's all because of you guys. So thank you for the super sick cabin vacation in Maine. You guys are all the best. Griff, this is your new summer home. <laughs> all right let's see what this baby looks like huh oops sorry oh yeah perfect lighting this is super cool yeah the view really sucks but i don't think we're gonna get a fish this one uh we're at the picala residence right now and ryan's just finishing up getting stuff ready and uh we're getting in an uber and where are we going? We're going fishing. We're going fishing. <laughs> but we might have a little bit of a plane ride first. So uh, right we now, definitely do. we definitely do have a plane <laughs> ride. And uh, and some other forms of transportation to get there. But uh, it's going to be fun. We're looking forward to it. Bart and Griff already made the long road trip out there. And uh, yeah, we're going to have uh, a little bit of a travel day for me, Pink, and Luke. But we're going to uh, have some fun. I'm really Here going that we've been looking forward to this one the whole entire year so uh this is going to be uh our last full send of the year so let's hope it goes well but we'll be checking in with you guys frequently uh right now we're waiting on ishmael our uber driver so he said he was about five minutes away so We're at the bar right now. That's my boo, Connor. Is the main? Yeah. Nice. Well, we're flying into Austin. Mm -hmm. Austin? Yeah. Driving up a lot. Which is not that big trip there. No. Yeah. But the amount of like 16 to 18 inches. <laughs> oh, so you've got, got a lot of years. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. So, uh, we're actually gonna go do airport related stuff now. We just got a little too fat for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so now we're on our way to our gate. We just got done visiting Connor at Ike's at the MSP airport. And uh, we're gate C. So, we're gonna see what kind of mischief we can get into.
Thor and Mini. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Which I really want. So, <laughs> the right car. one. So, slight problem. Slight problem. Okay. I'm going to call Bart. That doesn't sound good. Oh, yeah, because it doesn't exist, so. Oh. Yeah. No. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Bart was supposed to get us a rental car. Yeah, I mean, we're still like 150 miles away from where we're trying to go, so. Let's yeah. Give a, let's give me a little ring here. Yo. What up? So we're at the airport. We're in Boston. Boston. Yeah, I need, yeah, but I, no, no bluefish in the harbor. But I need a car. <laughs> we, we, we are to pick up the car. What, is, what are you talking about? Well, I'm just standing here by this bus with no way to go, uh, like to Maine from here. You forgot to get us a car. That seems super helpful at this moment in time. So is this just what, a figure it out situation? I think this is a figure it out situation and there's a bunch of public transportation around there and Griff and I are tired and now we're going grocery shopping for you, so we're oh about to walk into a grocery store, so. Another mega failure. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Good luck. Uh-huh. Oh. Well, the good news is they also said that they have no more cars. <laughs> <laughs> that also would have been equally as bad. Well, okay. Looks Oops. like uh, Pink and I are gonna put our heads together and figure it out. I need a drink. All right, so the boys just landed in Boston and uh, Griff and I have to get groceries for pink, so this is probably going to be just a mega failure. But we have a grocery list, so we'll see how this goes. I need a white onion, and then I need two red onions. I mean, you could probably put them in the same one, I imagine. That was pretty good. No, I didn't grab them. You said soup bowl, like, right? Red bowls? Yeah. In reality, we should get the double stuff, but he said specifically regular Oreos, yeah. correct? I like double stuff, but gotta go with the man ass. Regular Oreos. If we get yelled at later for this, he's getting thrown in the lake. Yep. That's that, that's where You realize how much these main people salt their food. This is probably just <laughs> single <laughs> serving. Just the <laughs> that's the standard right there. <laughs> the whole box. Should be good. <laughs> they they put so much salt. I mean, this one's this one's a bit smaller. I don't think you will. They love their salt. <laughs> they really do. This is like baby size. I think one pound, yeah, only sixteen ounces. <laughs> I really thought that this was way more uh, advanced than that. Yeah, honestly, Pink test us better next time. That yeah, was child's play. That was you have the keys, not me. Okay, so here's the thing. We bought all the food for Pink, but uh, we don't know how to cook it. So we're stopping at one more restaurant while we're here. Gonna check it out. Griff said there's a uh, there's someone singing, so this would be good. We got a lot of music.
All right, we just smashed some grub. We're finding our way to this train station now, but we are freaking downtown Boston, baby. We're just chilling right now. Verified, ain't no ice in this harbor right here. No ice. <laughs> So we got a couple of blocks down to this train station, but we're just taking it in. This place is sick. Never been to Boston, so pretty lit. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. We're gonna go catch a train now. Yeah, I think there's a Bruins game literally happening right there. So yeah. <laughs> we gotta make it over there before uh, everyone gets out of this game. It's gonna yeah. get rowdy, I'm pretty sure, because they're definitely winning. <laughs> Target acquired. You guys gonna set it free out there somewhere? Oh, no. <laughs> oh no. No, I think into our we got different plans for this guy. Yeah. Alright. Got anything you want in mind? Uh not specifically. That one will work. Perfect. <laughs> Trust your judgment here. Alright. <laughs> yeah, I'll okay. go. We're mad, so we're getting a lobster. <laughs> Thanks for your help, by the way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> we are, guys. Thank you, Mike. Good one. Take care. Thank you. We have a lobster. All right, so Griff and I are back at the Airbnb, but most importantly, as you know, we drove out here like four or five days ago, and the boys are on a train, I think, right now, and we got to make an order. So what's great about Thorn Brothers, as you all know, we have our custom rod series with them, but they're a full tackle retailer and they can ship out to Maine. So we need a few last minute items and Griff has a custom rod that he needs a reel for. I need to, so we need a 2500 Sienna for you. Yep. And then we need, we need a couple other tackle items. So yeah, I'm gonna say we need some what, Tika minnows? Yeah, I'm gonna do my best to hold this at the same time. It probably would have been smarter if I would have had you do this, but FG, is that, that's just a regular FG, that yep, would be. Yep, the red and, red and black one. 2,500. And the great thing is, just add it to my cart. Boom, right there, Sienna, very, it's a very good ice reel because it's honestly like very affordable. And then we need some Tika minnows because we came out to Maine for one reason and one reason only, and that's freaks. Oh <laughs> no, a big crappie. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I got distracted. Yeah, There's perch. a lot of perch out here. There is. We didn't know how many perch were out here until we got here, and oh my God, there's a lot of perch. So we need some one eighth ounce Tikas. What color are you thinking, Griff? That one. The one you just had, that chartreuse. The chartreuse, yeah, that's what's been. a lot of fish like chartreuse out here. That's been the best for you? That's what I've found. Yeah. All right, we'll get six of them. And the nice thing about Thorn here is we can just look through these different product pictures they have and figure it out. This one looks good. So I think what I'm also going to grab too, since we're kind of in alawive country, is uh, we're going to get some big baits. Okay, so we're gonna get some Jamie XLs because Waldo absolutely loves these things. So we're gonna get some chartreuse glows because Griff said they really like chartreuse from what he's seen. And then we're gonna get something a little more natural. We're just gonna go with that fat head color. Something I saw on the site that was pretty cool. Z-Man came out with these Z-Man Stingers and Z-Man Shad Fries that are just big minnows and like we said we're we're fishing for these fish chase owl wives and perch so uh we're gonna get some of these and check them out other than that i'm gonna shop around on the site real quick but we're gonna make an order and it's gonna be overnight shipped to us so i think that that'll arrive they have to send it out tomorrow morning because it's late right now they i don't expect them to no, be at thorn brothers at, yeah 10 30 local time they're not gonna be there but they'll ship it out tomorrow it'll be here saturday and that's what we need. We just need a little bit of last minute tackle to uh, try to catch the biggest crappie we've ever put on film, maybe ever been put on film. So we're excited about it. Excuse me. Yep. <laughs> Not a pigeon whisperer. Oh, 
Alright, we just got on this train. I think it's like a couple hours up to where we're going, so we're just gonna chill. Uh oh. <laughs> Ten bucks a picture, bro. <laughs> All right. That's, fair. That's a fair price. That is. How are we doing, guys? Good. good. That's good. We're on, I think, a couple stops left until uh, until we've reached our uh, destination. Hopefully, Bart's at the, the train station stop. But otherwise, it's going to be a long night for us. But it's already like... It's almost one. Yeah, it's almost one in the morning. And uh, we've been on this dang train since 1030. And to be honest, it's actually pretty comfortable and relaxing now. And... Uh, yeah, we're just chilling. We got a friend Bobby Orr with us. Uh, yeah, Bobby. Little little Bobby. You found him crawling around the train. Little Boston Bobby. Little Boston Bobby. Yes, chill? yes, he is alive. Yeah, boy. He's yeah, just, he's just chilling. He's squared up. Oh yeah. But you know. See. Yeah, he's a bad boy. Good old pound and a halfer. I'm sure he's from Maine. We're taking him back. Yeah, we're taking him back to Maine. Unfortunately, he'll never swim again. But. Yeah. He will be turning into our late night snack once we get to the uh, Airbnb. But like I said, hopefully Bart's there. Because if he's not there, we're going to have some some figuring out. We're going to have some words. Like, we're going to have some words, bro. I, yeah. <laughs> It'll be interesting. But I'm letting Bobby go a couple rounds with old Bart. Oh, yeah. He will, uh, <laughs> while Bart's sleeping, if he does not at the train station, he will have a creature in his bed with him. Bobby. And Bobby's it'll be Bobby. To him. Oh, yeah. And the rubber bands will be off the box. <laughs> oh, yes. No remorse. But, yeah, so we got about an hour left in this train ride, so. Thank you, man. You too. And now the two parties meet. It's been. I mean, Griff's, Griff's basically a local now. He's been talking to all all the people around town. He's asleep back at the Airbnb now. Uh, him and I put in the Thorn order, and yeah, now I'm here to grab the boys. It's late at night. We're down in the saltwater region of Maine right now. We need to go get up into the hills. Yep. So, the hill. yeah, we're gonna take, I don't know, apparently they have a friend named Bobby. I don't think I wanna grab Bobby. <laughs> So but know, bro. Just, <laughs> he doesn't seem do. very nice. That's all I don't know. want Bobby. <laughs> I don't like Bobby. He's scared. <laughs> Bobby needs home. to grow on me. He's home. Look, look, he's like a parrot. He's park. back in Maine, just, bro. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take Bobby back to the Airbnb. Look, Bobby's harmless. See, he just he just chills. That's he's harmless because he has the class. <laughs> he wouldn't be harmless if he didn't have. No, dude. Game, he has so. some all right, all right, we're getting back to the Airbnb. Okay, so we are back at the Airbnb. Everybody's finally together in Maine. It's a beautiful sight to see. We've been honestly waiting for this trip for a really, really, really long time. And with that, pink. Go in that fridge. There's a beer on the middle, on the far right. I'm gonna have one of those. What what beer is that? Oh, this is just a little break your PB right here. Give me one of these. And uh, merch <laughs> drop, merch drop number three happens to be mm -hmm. break your pb so if you want one of these sweatshirts t-shirt whatever you want you can have griff riding a crappie and i mean you can go to Giesenbroy and grab one Get of these some bear. and also we'll be having like a meetup announcement coming out for a meetup at Giesenbroy to have some beers with us and uh raise some money for saint jude so that'll be coming there'll be more details there but for now Pretty sick sweatshirt. God, and uh, mint. <laughs> you got to deal with a lobster, don't you? Yeah, it seems only right. We brought Bobby all the way from Boston, so he's getting the ax in Maine. What are you going to do? So we're doing this lobster right now. It is like 3 in the morning, and we're just going to get her going here. So I got the pot rolling behind me with some salt water in it, and we're just going to get this thing done with. Bobby's going in the pot. Give it like 12 minutes and it'll be done.
All right, so we just got them boiled up, had them in there for like 12 minutes or so. This one's like about a pound and a half lobster right here. So the cool thing about lobster is it's super easy to cook. So you just put in some salt water and uh, that's pretty much it. So what I'm gonna do now is just get all the meat out, load it up in this bowl, a little butter on there. We're gonna crush this thing. A little welcome to main present right here. So get this thing broken down. I'm gonna take the claws off, get the tail meat off. Let's get this thing butchered up. All right, so I just got all the meat taken out of this thing. I'm just gonna chunk it all up. I got a little bowl here, a little melted butter, and we're just gonna go ham on this. That's what I'm talking about right there. All right, let's crush this freaking Bobby Lobster. Bobby Lobster and go to bed. Yep. Yeah, so we got to the first uh, lake today that I scouted. Um, this lake has a lot of eaters in it, tons of perch, tons of crappies. What I did is I came out of the channel and I just kind of worked my way across this edge here. And I found the perch were up a little shallower. And as I worked my way into this little basin that's right on this side here, um, it was all crappies, basically from right here all the way to 100 yards that way, basically. And then uh, once I found them, I just left because I didn't need to beat on until the boys got here. Thank you, Griff. <laughs> Bottom of this size. Bottom of this Hello. Watch this though. This is the funny thing. <laughs> I told you they're stupid. Just, I drill another hole right here. Alright, you guys talk to your GoPros. I'm gonna go get the. They're moving around a lot though. They weren't doing this the other day. Hey there. Ah. Oh, there's a couple under this hole. They come to sit. Oh my god. <laughs> so, how big's this school? Oh my god. My first main crappie. There we go. Nice little eater. I could actually honestly probably throw this one back, but we'll eat that one. I don't know what the size of all these ones we're gonna catch are here. I have about 15. I here. literally wasn't marking any fish while I was dropping it. They all showed up below me. Yeah, so we're dropping down right now. I've already got one racing up Ooh, to come eat not my a bait, big, so that's pretty cool. But, crappie in Maine, baby. Little guy. Ooh, that one actually has some beef to it. Okay. What? I can see him. Whoop. Look at how tubby this guy is. <laughs> Did you get any, like, solid ones out here? Or were they here we go. Another Eda. We got to uh, we got to catch some fish for Pink to uh, cook, and like nine to twelves are the, they're honestly ten to twelves are about the perfect eaters. So we're gonna load up on a bunch of eaters. That's kind of the goal right now. There's also some big ones in here, so we're just gonna get get the hook set hand loosen up a little bit here. I think. I got Kala. I got Kala. Perfect. Let's see. Here. Oh. 
Oh, geez, I didn't even see that one. That's a beautiful little one. Absolutely choked the, the tikka minnow. Beautiful little one. Actually, we're going to be keeping, so. I'm marking through the ice. Kind of it. Oh, geez. He's so excited they don't know what to do with themselves. A nice little quappy. Just jig it aggressively and all of a sudden they'll just appear. Nice thing about the tikka minnow is it gets down pretty quick. And you get a good coverage area when you rip it because it glides so well. Oh gosh, this one's charged up. I showed Luke that. He was like, really? <laughs> just lake, just lake trouting. Even more, Matt. Yeah. Super small. Uh, the water's clear. I can see him where the hell down there. Well, you can obviously see he's small. <laughs> like I said, they, you gotta weed through Oh, we're about to weed through them. We're weeding. So look at that. That's another big wad of them right here. And then. Oh, yeah. Look at them all. I, I want They're 360 degrees. Right yeah. Oh, want to watch me get bit? <laughs> ah! Too little. Too little. We don't want him. Good God. Yeah, that was sick. I can't believe I'm near down there. Six, seven feet down. <laughs> now they're dropping down. Oh, never mind. There's a heavy one. Pull it out, please. Found them. Uh, they had shifted a little bit from where I left them, but uh, yeah, we're on them now. I mean, as you can see, they're really, really stupid. I mean, you can't even get it down. Like I was when I caught that bigger one, it was like seven feet under the ice and twenty-nine feet of water. Oh, there's some bigger marks in this school. So stupid. And look at this. <laughs> Every time. He's still marking grip? Uh, yeah. yeah. If you don't mind, uh, I'll cut one. You just drill another hole. Well, it's going to take you a bit to get that out. By the time I get my jig down and back up, we'll be good. A little above your auto zoom. You know? There's a ton flow. Well, he knocked a lot of slack in that. That's where the bigger one that I got was way up there. He's on there. Oh, yeah, he was. 
I was wondering how long you were going. Oh, well, I was trying to find my jig on your backs, and that was a whole deal. All right, Griff, you're in. Alright, I have literally not moved. I've probably caught 75 to 100 fish out of this hole. It's literally every drop. I just released like three of them, so they kind of left me, but it was like as soon oh my god. There's just vapor trail every time. Your jig's just falling, they come from seven, eight feet below it. It's like lake trout fishing, it's ridiculous. They just come racing up. So far, we have not really gotten into big ones yet. A lot of these, like nine inches, maybe. And uh, they're just gagging it. I feel like you could drop any bait. I'm just dealing a pinhead just because it gets down really fast. But every single one so far has been about that size. But we're going to move, I think, because this is sick. But uh, now that we've caught like a bajillion crappies, I think we're going to try to find some big ones. This place is cool. Okay, so what we found out is uh, the basin of this lake, if we wanted to catch... 2500 nine inches in an hour we probably could but we're looking for some of the bigger ones because there are 15s and 16s in here you've seen pictures just got to find them so we're getting out to the edge of the basin now just looking for some structure just to see if they're riding somewhere else Yeah, they're not bad. That's better. Unless it's snagged. They just snagged them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we fished around that basin, caught a... I don't even know how many 9 to 10 and we caught, Griff. I'd, what do you think? Hundreds? we could have caught thousands if we wanted to um but not the size really we're looking for even for eaters we kind of want some pink ones some 11 to 12s he needs some bigger fillets for um yeah. what he's cooking so what's also kind of cool about maine and in general there, there's a bunch of big perch up here and when griff was out here scouting he ran into some so we just snuck over to the other side of this lake try to catch a handful of some yellow perch to eat uh, we are not only discriminatory toward, or we are non-discriminatory here. Uh, we will eat perch. They are very good. So try to catch some perch, get some eaters, and then we're going to hop to another lake. Uh, really, all the lakes we're going to are based off of tips from locals, online research, and there's not a lot, to be honest. So we just talked to a few people, and Griff talked to someone at a bait shop. So that might be the new lake we go to. But we need some perch first. Those are big marks. Oh, perchy. Little guy on the Tika minnow. I went to a little bit smaller Tika here. Went back down to the 16th ouncer. And the hot pink with the white polka dots. Not terrible. Yeah, I mean, we'll look at what time is it here right now? One. Oh, there they are. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we'll give this like. Yeah, we found them. I think he could have hit more perfectly flat. That was like Jesus. Wow, those perch are uh, aggressive. Look at this one. Man, we came out here uh, to search for gigantic crappies, which we are uh, definitely going to do, but that is a really good eater perch. Just... Ooh, our first Larry. Um, 
but just got him using a drop XL. This is actually the same jig I was using when we were out in western Minnesota for the uh, last episode you guys would have saw. I didn't, I've been editing so I haven't really re-rigged any rods, but drop XL is good. Got a little silky paired on her and it's nice because we can just rifle through these fish and not worry about bait. Big perch. Yeah? Yeah. Down? Yeah. Thought it was a bluegill I was fighting. Is it basically digesting that thing right? Pretty much. Hey. I think they're eating bugs. Buggies? Pooping spooge? No, he's pooping bugs. Like literally, I got one on his fin that is like basically a bug. These marks are a little bit fatter. Oh, there's a good one. Yeah. You want to pull that juice out there? Yeah. Damn, I can't believe I f***ed that up. I was standing up. I should have been sitting. This is a solid one. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's not as big as I thought. The other one was way bigger than that. They're vicious. They're probably in that hole right now. There's the sh stuck. I'm honestly marking the little bus. <laughs> so, yeah. We got a lot more meat to it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Another Eda. Chunk. This is. We came here to catch crappie, but this perch bite. I think Pink even said. This is earlier, as good a perch bite as I've ever this had. This is one of the best perch bites I think I've ever been on. And we're by the Dakotas and stuff. Like, there's a lot of perch, and they are. They are very mean. I mean, they're not mags, but they're like yeah, solid. they're not like yeah, like. I think said they're not magnums or anything but like they're really nice fish like 12 to 13 and a half just really good eaters oh one just tried to meet me on the way down he missed it though yeah normally you think about like, catching them by the bottom and these are like seven feet off the bottom <laughs> oh fuck that one he felt better don't worry his buddy's coming up like nine feet to meet me yeah. Come on. Come on. Uh, in the deuce here. Give me a good oh, one. Another eat up. Give me a chunk. Oh, yeah. Chunk. Solid perch there. Think, Pink, you're catching him on a pinhead? Yeah, I'm dealing pinhead right now. Dealing pinhead. I got a drop XL down. But and, I did uh, catch quite a few on that ribbon leech spoon yeah they're eating they're eating it's fun and you guys i mean you guys know about our rod series and everything I think someone's using a pink's chronicle i'm using bart's chronicle waldo's using or griff's using waldo's chronicle oh my god <laughs> that thing literally knocked slack in my line um but you guys can get all the baits we're using and everything too at thorn brothers Ooh, wow I, th I think so. Oh, yeah. There's another. I mean, dude, they're just so mean. Yeah, they fight good. They fight really good. This is fun. Watch this. Luke, you want to ask? Whacking and stacking on the Tika Minnow. I just went back down to the 116th ouncer just to see if I can get them to fire on it a little bit better and they are just coming unglued on it right now. I'm just using the Waldo's Chronicle Rod, three pound fluoro, and they are having a heyday with it, it seems like. And I finally don't have a fish on my graph. Oh, just kidding. And I got him. And there's a bunch more down there. I got some good eaters now. I got some great eaters now. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Pink's got another one. Tim and I are on. Well, and I think Waldo's on a good school. I think Griff's on a good school right now. Yeah, there's just so many groups to get on. We just ran into a bunch of real good eater perch and I mean we're having fun. I think we're using I think 
The only rod missing from the Chronicle lineup that's being used right now is uh, Griff's Chronicle because that's for finicky bites and these fish are suicidal. So uh, it's fun to fight them on uh, like Pink's rod and my rod and then Waldo's power noodle is super fun too. But this is crazy. I mean, it's an assembly. It is basically an assembly line right Just now. Just non-stop purchase. Non-stop. This one feels a bit better. <laughs> I love it when I can hear the drag over there just going zzz, zzz, zzz. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look at this one. That's a good one. Just a stud of a perch right there. That is going to eat very good. Oh, he's so angry. He's gripping down on the bait so hard. Um, <laughs> I just want to get back down there. This is so much fun. But yeah, so nice eater right there. Really good one. And uh, so we've gotten a ton of, <laughs> this has been the most asked question this year, actually. So this reel, this is a clam elite spooler. This is a spooler reel we use. The reason we like spoolers is you can really control the fall rate of, uh, your bait and then no line twists so that's the reel we're using we prefer it we actually i think almost all of our every single one of our rods that isn't a schoolie or like pink's rod um basically has one of these on them they're they're super nice and yeah just really efficient well built i've been using the same ones for like four or five years they're just bulletproof and you can get them at thorn yeah we probably got like 25 20. everybody good It's hard to leave them because they're so fun. Oh yeah, chunk. Is it? Yeah. Oh no. Chunk. They like that thing they They do. Too, a little too much though. <laughs> Another chunk perch. They're just gagging this pinhead though. It's ridiculous. As soon as you get it down there, they just come flying up. I think that thing ate it about seven feet off the bottom. <laughs> yeah, he's just darting, a little darting perch. <laughs> I can't even, he's so mad, his gills are flared out and his mouth is just clamped shut. Yeah. Okay, so our little perch run has come to an end. It's kind of getting towards the later afternoon. We do have another lake that is fairly close that Griff went to the other day and we want to go check it out we want a really big crappie today we want to see what maine's kind of capable of it is i mean it's known for gigantic crappies it's just not well known around the united states yet so i'm gonna go try to get a really big one before sun sets but we're gonna be able to eat fish tonight perch are amazing super delicious and i'm sure pink's got a wicked recipe but let's go get a big crappie to the next lake Yeah, so that didn't suck. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I like touched my pop and it fell right into the trash can. Like barely touched it. Okay, so we're on a new lake and uh, we know like we said, we, we know nothing about these places. We know there's crappies in here from what we've heard, but we're just drilling and looking at live and just looking for life for the most part. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep bouncing around, but we got about an hour left before sunset. We're just looking to see if we can run into a big group or maybe just one really big one. Don't do nothing. Oh, there. Cause it looked like it might've been kind of a shit Oh my Ooh. God. I mean, look at this, look at this. Okay, yeah, I'm cool with that. You should go 35. There. That looks pretty good. 35 right there. What does it feel like, Waldo? It doesn't feel big. No? It is a crappie. It's a nice crappie. It's a nice one. Beautiful little eater. I only know while they're sitting. Yeah. Two feet off the run. Beautiful little crappie right there. Very nice one. All of that is a nice eater. There's another one down there. Oh. Uh. 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 
Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody shut up. There they are. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Wow. Look at them all. Right here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Yeah, right here. Oh my oh, god. Oh, hello. Holy balls. Come on, Waldo. Okay, you get ready to tag team with me? Yep, I'm ready. Get down there. Uh, I think it's a white perch. I've never caught a white perch before. Mm -hmm. I think. I don't really know what size you keep to eat or anything. I know literally nothing about them. Look at that thing. We don't have those. Yeah, I've never, uh, I've never caught a white perch. But that was a legitimate. We pulled it up the hole and we're like, "What's that?" Yeah. <laughs> that would be a white perch. They're common here in the northeast. And uh, yeah, that's got a nice little slab of meat on it. So we're going to try it. I don't know. Same what? Okay, so as you can tell, the sun is setting. We got out here and we've been looking around with live and we found just a pile of fish. I just got this one. Obviously, baby. He's way too small. So get him back. We're, we're trying to keep up with this school right now. They keep moving and it looks like there's some monsters in it. Just trying to get one free before the end of the night because they're definitely here. You marking? Yep. Yep, loaded. They're already coming up. Didn't even make it to the zoom window. Oh! Oh my god. Just, just, just relax. These marks are big too. That's a giant. That wasn't him. I that wasn't him. Something raced up by him. Oh, he's growing. It's angry. White perch. White perch. God, they fight, dude. Holy snakes. Get up, y'all. Go. Sick. Don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. They're still there. There was a ton. Is that your first white perch? I believe so. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Just don't get it. <laughs> In the deucer, this feels better. It's got to be a white perch. A lot of head yep. shakes. Yep, white perch. Wow, well, look at that. There are copies mixed in though. These things are like fat too. Yeah, Butter very balls. cool. Butterballs. I don't, yeah. They like that thing moving though. Like when you slow it down, they're like, meh. They want to hunt right here. <laughs> that one's really white. Sick. I got to get him on Hawk. You can go. Just keep him here. These will eat up. They just don't like a cricket. They're back. <laughs> Oh, it was more than one. <laughs> Just go. I'm almost up anyway. God, these things have meat though, dude. Like, they're significantly more beefy than regular perch.
the one. No, I literally had one. I mean, they might be like just outside or something. Look, are they still here? Uh, it's good. You're going to hear about it. I was like, to the left, going way. to hear about it. Not too many people have it. And uh, at about 30. These things are pretty sweet. Dude, these fish are pissed off. Yeah. Like when I'm just holding them, like you can't. Yeah. And the sun is set, obviously. Um, we ran into a couple of eater crappies. Ended up catching white perch, which was pretty cool. I, uh, we honestly forgot those things existed coming up here. And then we started catching them. It was pretty sweet. Um, very unique bite and bite. It was fun. Got the full main experience today, but... We're still looking for giant crappies and we will be doing that in the morning. However, now we're heading back to the Airbnb and definitely stay tuned. And yeah, we should have fun back at the house. All right, so we got back to the cabin after being on the lake all day and we had an absolute blast. It was our first day actually fishing in Maine kind of as a group. Griff did a little bit of scouting before we got here. So we went and checked out one of the lakes that he found and it was just stacked with fish. We caught a ton of crappies, uh, no freaks, which was Kind of unfortunate but we probably caught more crappies today than we've caught any other day that we've ever fished <laughs> together so uh, we got on a cool bite we caught a ton of perch and then we hopped to a different lake and then we actually got on a really cool bite where we were catching white perch which was really cool i don't think any of us have ever caught a white perch before so we kept a bunch of those and uh, we kept a bunch of yellow perch also what we're going to do tonight is use all of those white perch fillets so i got this whole bowl right here cleaned all those fish up took a while because we did have a lot but we have a bunch of white perch meat right here. And what we're gonna make tonight are bang bang wonton cups, which I'm super psyched for. I love making these and uh, they're super delicious. So I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. And it's gonna be really easy and really delicious. And I'm looking forward to this one. And trying a new meat. I've never eaten a white perch. Let's get into this thing. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, there's a couple of fresh things that I wanna get going here. One, I'm gonna make a little bit of a, kind of a slaw, it's just um, red cabbage, red onion, lime juice, salt, and pepper. So I'm gonna get that going right now because it needs to sit for a little bit and I'll start to wilt those things down and get really soft. Second thing I'm gonna do is make some green onion strands. That's what's gonna go on top of these at the end. It's a nice little garnish, really crunchy, it gives a little bit of an onion taste at the end, but it's something you gotta kind of prep in advance. So I'm gonna get that stuff cut up right now and I'll show you how to mix those things together. Right, so for these green onions, what I'm gonna do is just use the top, just the kind of green portion of this. I'm gonna take these off, and then what I'm gonna do is use my knife to just take off kind of the dry tips of them. And then using them the long way, what I'm gonna do is cut them into as fine of strands as I can, this direction. And then right next to me, I have a bowl of ice water that's just been kind of sitting there, so it's ultra, ultra cold right now. And what this is going to do, it's going to cause these to curl up. And this will be a little garnish for when we're all said and done with this thing. It's a super easy way to get kind of a cool garnish, nice onion taste on the end that uh, kind of spices up whatever dish you're trying to make. So these will look really cool at the end. I'm going to take these right into a bowl of ice water. And they can just hang out while I'm getting everything else ready to go. And that cold water is going to make them curl up really nice. And then we'll have some green onion strands. Okay, so we got that little bit of a slaw thing just kind of chilling over here. And that um, acid from the lime and the salt is going to start to break that down a little bit. I got the green onion strings just kind of chilling right there. So now kind of the most important step of this whole thing is these wonton cups. So I have a whole bunch of wonton wrappers right here. I got the square ones. I like to use these for this because they would create a nice little 
cup bowl for you to put all your stuff in at the end. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little oil in a pot behind me, get it hot, and I'm just gonna fry these. There's a little bit of a technique to it, so I'll show you how to do that, but it's very easy, and I'll show you how to do it right now. Okay, I'm waiting for the oil to heat up behind me for us to make the wonton cup. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna bang together the sauce really quick. So this is a bang bang wonton cup. Bang bang sauce is really simple to make. It's three things. It's sriracha, thai, sweet Thai chili sauce, and mayo. So I'm gonna do uh, like probably a half a cup of mayo and then about equal parts sriracha and Thai chili sauce, so probably about two tablespoons of each. And uh, I'll taste it if I want it a little more spicy, I'll add you know, more sriracha, a little more sweet, I'll use more Thai chili sauce. But it's a super easy sauce to make and it's really delicious on a lot of things. But what we're gonna use it for in this one is it's gonna go and coat our fried fish. So once we make the wonton cups, we're gonna bread the fish, fry them in little chunks, kind of like popcorn chicken put the sauce on them, and then top it all in a little wonton cup. So I'm going in with the Thai chili sauce right now, and this really isn't spicy at all. It's actually super sweet. And then I have some sriracha, about the same amount of that. You can mess around with the quantities quite a bit, depending on if you like it spicy or not spicy, but it should turn a really nice reddish orange color. And when you put it on fried fish, it really absorbs into that breading really well, and it's super delicious. All right, so what I'm gonna do is take one of these wonton wrappers, I'm gonna use a ladle, I'm gonna just set it on top of the oil and then press it down with this. So it's gonna be basically on the bottom of this and it's gonna form into a little cup. I'm just gonna hold it under the oil for about 10 seconds. It's gonna boil up a little bit. And as soon as I take the ladle off, I'm just gonna let it brown and it'll hold its shape. So, here we go. Let that thing just chill out in there. And just by pressing down on it, it'll naturally wanna float up so it'll create that kind of cup shape. Once they're brown, I'll just take them off, set them on this plate, and do a whole stack of them at one time. And they'll cool down, and that's totally fine. And then we'll load them up with all of our filling at the end, and they're gonna be delicious. All right, so I got all these wonton cups made up, made a whole pile of them. The cool thing about these is you could totally make them ahead of time if you knew you were gonna do this. You could do this and then just store them in like a big Tupperware container or something, and they'll stay crunchy for probably four or five days at least. But, but we didn't do that because we were fishing all day. We were and we never plan ahead. And also, I came here on an airplane. So here we are. <laughs> so that took a little bit of time to do how we did it, but it's good now. So what I'm going to do is I got the fish. I'm going to cut it up into little bite-sized chunks, and uh, I'm going to mix it up with one egg just to kind of get it all coated. And then I got some Catch and Cook, the crunchy original one. I'm going to dump it in this Ziploc bag right here, get everything shaken together, fry them behind me. And as soon as they come out of the oil and they're still really hot, I'm gonna hit them with that bang bang sauce, mix it all together, and then we're gonna plate these up. There's literally nothing else you have to do. So, time to chunk the fish up. Let's fry some fish. And if people want that catch and cook, we haven't used the breading much this year. We used it more last year's recipes, yes. but. We haven't done a ton of fish frying, but we love the seasonings. These breadings are awesome, we just haven't used them a ton. But this one in particular, and the flame, really good. They also have a beer batter one that is exceptional as well. We have a discount code, crappie 10 Get a discount. Get them all, try the seasoning, try the breading. It's all really good stuff. So, we'll start cutting, and then we'll start frying. So we're gonna go over and start frying this fish. So I got the oil hot in this pan, pot, and I'm just gonna start dropping them in in batches. I don't wanna do too many at one time because it's a pretty small pot and I don't wanna overdo it here, but like one big handful at a time. And then when they come out, I'm just gonna put them in a bowl with a little bit of paper towel in there. And once I have a batch done, I'm gonna transfer them to a bowl and then get them sauced up. All right, so I just got all this fish fried up. I got that bang bang sauce. The fish is still super hot, just came out. I'm just gonna drizzle this over the top. And then just kind of fold it in there. And that breading is just gonna start to absorb that. And it'll kind of turn a little bit darker orange color. What I'm gonna do now is just kind of get this all set up, get a bunch of these laid out, and uh, show you how to plate a couple of them up. And then we're gonna start smashing these things. It smells unbelievable now that we got the sauce in there. It's all steaming out of there. Oof, I'm excited for these. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just lay a bunch of these out. 
And it's nice because you can put a ton of them together super quick. Just do a bunch of them on this board here. Take a little bit of our slaw, put that down right in the center of each one. And now that cabbage and those onions have broken down, they're nice and soft. Still a little bit of a crunch though, but they are wilted so they're not really raw anymore. And these are just like vibrantly purple, which is awesome. And the whole point of this being like an acidic slaw is that it cuts through the richness of that mayo sauce on the fish. Really kind of a nice balanced bite. Okay, so we got the slaw in there. Now what I'm gonna do is take some of this fish and just put a little pile right in the middle of each one. All right, so last thing I'm gonna do is take some of those green onion strands that we got, shake them off, and then just top all these. All right, so I got them all put together. That's the finished product right there, and they are super, super good to eat, whether they're warm or cold, but they are good when the fish is still really warm. So we're gonna dig into these. I think I'm gonna put a bunch more together and we're just gonna start crushing these. And I'm super excited to eat these because I've never had white perch before. So I'm just gonna dig in there. Nice crunchy bottom, that fish is still nice and warm. Luke, get up here. How was it? Really good. The fish is, uh, whoa, the fish is super firm which I could tell when I was filleting it. It's almost more like a walleye fillet, it's super cool. A little firmer than crappie. The flavor is pretty similar, but definitely a firmer textured fish, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. It is a good texture. Mm-hmm. Uh, white perch is good, really good flavor too. Yeah, I'm glad we got into a pile of them today. That's delicious. That but, happened in the last like 15 minutes. I know, it's crazy. We literally just found them on live, we're like, those look different, drill on top of them, and we just beat the crap out of them for like five minutes. Ended everybody up with- Everybody got their PB. Yeah, everybody got a PB white perch yeah. today. But super soaked. We had plenty enough to make dinner for all of us, and super good. We should try making these, and the other thing is, this recipe right here, if you want this one, it's in the cookbook. And now, we will see you all tomorrow, right? Yeah, we got big, a big, big game plan for tomorrow. Big fish coming. Big fish on the way. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a now very wintry Maine. Uh, yesterday was very mild, and there was basically no snow on the ground. That changed drastically. It's early in the morning, and we got to drive. There's crappies all over the state of Maine now, and uh, the hope today is to finally show you a glimpse of what is possible here. We are very excited for this. This drive is really going to suck, and hoping it'll be worth it. We have a feeling it will be. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, that's a start to the day. Wow. <laughs> Sick. Look at that thing. That's a moose, dude. <laughs> that was the first ones we got on. Look at that. Pinhead slurped it. I didn't even get a chance to start my GoPro yet. We had just seen those two and figured we'd drop on them way high off bottom. The freaking amount of head on this fish is crazy. That's our first uh, beast in Maine. And the funny thing is, that's a little one. Yeah. they say so uh we're gonna get back to it because there's definitely fish around cj yeah. ran into some more and let's do this thing man. yeah and that was a wolf pack so we'll see if we can refine them there was at least two more with them awesome fish i'm gonna let this one go see if we can get an even bigger one yes let's go that was sick yeah that was very cool oh my gosh <laughs> you just up the hole that fast? Yeah. Well, it's only nine feet right here. Okay, apparently there's two more. That's my first big one. They just came screaming in. <laughs> okay, so just caught this one. I had another one coming in, but uh, yeah, this thing just vapor trailed the pinhead. Caught it on Pink's rod. Super fun to fight these fish on that rod, and they're so aggressive out here. 
Um, but that's just an awesome fish. Like Griff said, their eyes are just enormous. So I don't know how old these things are. This guy's a little beat up on the tail and stuff, but just beautiful crappie. So we're gonna get this one back. They're mean, they're angry, and they wanna eat. So we're gonna keep chasing them around. This is sick. All we're doing right now is we're just in this kind of back basin area. Um, it's really shallow most of the place, but there's kind of this old, I don't even know if it's a river or a creek channel, and they're just migrating along it and going to this feeding platform. But we're gonna keep chasing them down. Name of the game with these fish is definitely gonna be sharpshooting because it doesn't look like they're very schooled up, but we can pick them off one by one and they're huge. So we're gonna do that. 